It should come as no surprise that Southern hospitality is near and dear to our hearts. But opening your door can sometimes present challenges. Today, we are offering some lighthearted tips to make you as a host shine. Welcome to the Steel Magnolias podcast. We are two sisters here to have uplifting conversations about life in the South. The South is full of beautiful diversity in landscape, people groups, and culture, and we want to showcase each part. We've got plenty of room at our table, so pull up your chair. Welcome back to Lainey's Kitchen Table. I'm Laura Beth. And I'm Lainey. And today we are chatting through some hospitality tips or cut or shortcuts or something to that effect. So I did want to mention we're staying in the vein of entertaining. Yes. Like if you want to talk about or think about overnight guests hosting and ha- serving hospitality in that sense, we actually did an episode a while ago that I'll have oh, to Oh, about really... setting up a guest room? Yes. That was a... A lot of people really liked that episode. But it had a lot of tips in it, yes. too, like having the Wi-Fi password already, like, listed out. Yeah, Having bottled waters out. So it really did Thinking have... through people are hot or cold. Yeah. Because everybody's different. Everybody's different. So, yeah, I'll link to that in our show notes. Today, we're focusing on entertaining, having friends over, just... Opening your door. Short term. (laughs) Short term visits. (laughs) Yes. And I'm sure there's overlap to things we've said over the last five years. Um, Yeah. There's going to be overlap. But this is such our heart for um, just, yeah. And getting people to your table. Yes. Or your couch. Or or your your fire pit. Or or your, (laughs) yes. Exactly. If we say table, it's wherever you may want to sit. Where you're gathering. And the point, really, of this episode is not to make you more efficient or well, productive. Maybe. It's actually, maybe, <laughs> but it's actually to make you enjoy your guests, better, you know, and be present. That's right. In the actual experience of the gathering that you, and as the host, you get to enjoy it too. That's right. Because if I'm exhausted, yeah, you may break down in tears with something and very important to tell me and I'm cross-eyed because right. I'm so tired. You're so tired or yeah. that. So let's find ways to not have that happen. So I think first and foremost, one of the best things to start with is not to get too crazy. Like just with your if, aspirations if you of Pinterest. If you thematic <laughs> that is really important, then go for it. But don't make a th- having a theme an essential well, that's hard because I love themes. But but I hear what you're saying. Like, yes. But like the world of Pinterest has complicated things. Yes. So much that that is what's stressing a lot of hosts out. It, you're exa- exactly right. And it's a huge time suck as well to yeah. craft some of these centerpieces. Yeah, if you're ugly to your family all week because <laughs> you've got to have the right Easter spread, then that's problematic. Heart check. (laughs) So I hear what you're saying, but I'm also like, if done right, you could have a cute theme and still... And if you have something... Break it down into bite-sized pieces. If you have something that's complex and you're like, I'm doing this no matter what, just start far out. A month early? (laughs) I mean, for real. Yeah. Start as far out as possible. And if you don't have time to do that, keep it simple and still do it. Yeah. Like still have people. Come over. Yes, absolutely. Just don't worry if it's not absolutely. all pastel Easter eggs. Yeah. Hanging on trees and stuff. It's yeah. all right. So first... Wouldn't that be cute to go all out? For... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> all righty. Well, do as much as you can ahead of time. Amen. Is Amen. huge. Yeah. A lot of that in general is themed through a bunch of the things that I wrote down. It yeah. just has different looks and shapes and forms that that prep work takes well one thing that's really helpful for me is pretty much like having a schedule Mm -hmm. I mean like a backwards yes that's a good way to look at it is work from the start time of the gathering I don't need to light candles five hours before they're gonna be right down to the nub yes so that 
is one of the last things yeah. or light in the fireplace or whatever. Yeah. Those are the last things. And then work your way back yeah. to the shopping list mm-hmm. and the cleaning. Mm-hmm. You don't want the f- floor just mopped yeah. <laughs> when they all get here and now it's wet. Right. I do think most people know, though, obviously just clean the areas that your guests are going to be in. Like, don't make this your spring cleaning oh. initiative coupled with the fact that people are coming over. Because that yeah. just adds unnecessary It does. And I, I'm easily sidetracked. So then when I pull out the vacuum, I'm like, oh, the coat closet needs to be cleaned out. Right. No, it doesn't right now, though. Right. And there's more <laughs> pressing things. Yes. There's more pressing things. Yeah. So personally, I think for some reason that outdoor gatherings are a million times easier to host. Oh, they are. Maybe that is because God's already taking care of the. Maybe you just have to clean your inside bathroom and then you know and wipe the deck, some or wipe the table cushions. down and yeah. yeah. I don't know. It just seems like in general they're easier to host. So maybe it is because of cleaning. I don't know, but I think just like keeping it as simple as possible putting away excess blankets pillows oh all the extra stuff that sits out yes tidying up as much as you can making room for on countertop spaces for oh not just what look at mine right now just make you want to laugh what you're putting out as the host but if somebody brings a host gift or yeah a vase of flowers or you know Whatever, just yeah. having, and then if you're not in a panic you on anything, where you're going to put it. it, who cares? At least your counter now looks tidy, right? That's so good. Well, I also think um, that working backwards really helps me a lot because I can think through in order. Yes, what needs to happen sequentially, yeah. and even thinking through things, I can break down into. Okay, I have thirty minutes right here, mm-hmm. so I'm going to go ahead and do this one thing. Like yeah. instead of having to find a three hour chunk of time, right? Yeah, if you've got that backwards to do list. Yeah, you can find a thirty minute thing, a ten minute thing. Right, somebody's running late to come pick you up or meet you for something. Mm-hmm. Hey, I can tackle one thing in ten minutes. That's true. That's true. So anything yeah. I can do to keep it in bite sized pieces and I'm real big on like planning my menu. Yes. With the event yes. or gathering or whatever. And then I can think through the grocery list. Yes. And then once I've got the grocery list and everything purchased. Yes. I like to think through like, can I go, you know, chopping takes a long time if you're chopping a lot of vegetables and stuff. Yes. So think of that as like, okay, obviously you can't chop five days ahead because it would be all slimy in a Ziploc somewhere, but you could a day or two ahead. Or maybe this is your opportunity to just go ahead and buy some of those chopped onions that they have in the produce section, right? It costs more. It does. But like, is it worth it in this instance? Maybe. That's true. So, yeah, I like what you're saying about prepping even in little chunks of time. Because, you know, some of this stuff just kind of hangs over our head of like, oh, I don't know where that platter is. And you just keep putting it off and putting it off. It's like, okay, I have 10 minutes. Let me go on the platter hunt. You know, like. Yes. Go ahead and have all your dishes that you know you're going to be serving stuff in. And then what if they're dusty because they're on a shelf somewhere? Well, now you've got to clean that. Yes. So getting all that. Yeah. Step done is a great yeah. help. So let me talk a little bit about serving platters and dishes. So oftentimes there's somebody at your church or in your neighborhood or in your friend group that has all this stuff. Oh, if and you if don't you own don't, it all, for sure. Just ask them yes. to borrow it. They, that person... Because I'm looking at you, Lainey, because you're that person. They love sharing this stuff. They love pulling it out and going, oh, yeah, and I've got this one and that one. And, uh-huh. you know, they give you choices. And yeah. so don't. Don't feel buy. like you have to buy the charcuterie board oh, or gosh, you have don't. to buy the whatever. Yeah. D- never, Borrow it. Do not buy a char- charcuterie board unless you are really wanting one anyway, but for a gathering. Because you can do, uh, you can use other things. You could put craft paper down that's true you can use your cutting you board go? you know like uh-huh. it doesn't have to be a like you know literal cool shaped yeah so yeah definitely though you know me i'm like but a cool shaped one is cool <laughs> so just borrow one <laughs> but southern gatherings do include food so 
the fact that you just mentioned that as a given is true. <laughs> yeah. It could sometimes just be little nibbles, but there's going to be food. Even if it's just a happy hour, there's going to be nibbles. Well, there needs to be if there's a happy hour. Well, yeah. Yeah. But, but you know. I mean, that's I just... that's another thing we need to mention, though. If you have alcohol. Yeah. And not that a happy hour has to be alcohol. It could be something else. But usually happy hour means alcohol. Mm-hmm. You need something for, for sure. people to eat, whether that's just some cheese straws and nuts or yeah. something. Yeah. So... A couple of things that I wanted to mention that would be good purchases if you have gatherings or if you're just like, that just sounds awesome. Okay. I've got two things. Okay. One, I think everybody knows that like crock pots are your friend in gatherings. So I'm not really talking so much as getting a regular crock pot because I think a lot of people already have just a standard crock pot. But Are you calling standard that big, huge oval one or the round one? The round one? Yeah. Yeah. But do you have liners? Uh-huh. I didn't even know that existed Those until a amazing. listener gave us yeah. some. Yeah. So get a crock pot liner pack and definitely use that. You'll be excited at cleanup time when you've got a lot of other cleanup to do that you scrubbing a, a crock pot isn't one of your items to do so good Laura Beth. but the other hack i would say is that there is there are um slow cooker buffets have you seen these laney they usually come in threes like a triple slow yes. cooker yes so this is smaller this would be like for your side items if it's a meal or this would maybe be three different dips or so it's not your you couldn't fit in your entree or something like if you were serving chili that would be too much to be in one, one little, of these. Yeah. You could, I guess, do all three of them. Yeah. The same thing. This little one's vegetarian and these two have true, meat. Or, true. It's kind of brilliant. So I'm just going to link to one of our picks in like our, we have an Amazon store. So we can link to things that are, we'll be mentioning in this episode in that store. But yeah. And they've got removable ceramic pots. So you can either put a little liner on that or it's yes. a smaller pot. So maybe you don't mind washing it at the end of the night but those are brilliant to have and to keep warm um on the flip side if you're doing something outdoors and you're not necessarily wanting to keep things hot but you're just wanting to keep things bug free i would say as cheap as they are those mesh covers here in the south yeah that's true are worth it like i found a pack of six that was less than fifteen dollars a pack of six, like six different covers. Are you serious? Yeah. I mean, because just flimsy. Where'd you find that? Amazon. That's awesome. They're just flimsy little things. Yeah. But it's enough it to keep mosquitoes and flies in. That's brilliant. That's a, the beauty of grilling outside, too, is a, you can close the grill and yes. bugs aren't on it yes. while it's cooking or even after. This should especially be factored in if you have been smoking anything that's outside and you're oh all the flies come all the flies they 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 love that smell just as much as we it's do it's disgusting it is disgusting. how many flies come so get some of those mesh food covers that those are my so good that's probably the only things um like kitchen staple or you wouldn't call that a kitchen staple but um those are the only products i think i'm going to mention today that's not a consumable so. Well, and, you know, timing with food is tricky. That's another thing to think through when you're doing your menu mm-hmm. and your yeah. backwards to-do list. Yes. Is don't have everything that has to be all sautéed on the stove all at the same time to stay hot at the same time. Does that make sense? So like, difficult. try to think through. Yeah. This could be in the crock pot. This could be in the oven. And all i got to do is quickly do this thing on top of the stove. Right. Or whatever. Yeah. Like, that's very real. Yeah. And if you've got too too many things that have to be sautéed, you might need to switch out something in your planning. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Because that is going to be really difficult. That's what I mean. Like, think through that as you're... But again, don't over... over, Don't not have something because of any of this. Yeah. Like, but we're trying to help you out. Sure. Yeah. Well, I also think when appropriate, solicit help. Yes. Now, it's not always appropriate. I know I've had... Certain things where I just felt like I was supposed to bless somebody, mm-hmm. where I don't want them to feel like they have to make something. To bring, or, yeah. But, you know, if you're doing a brunch and you know that 
a particular person makes great cinnamon rolls and they're like, is there anything I can do? Mm -hmm. You'd be like, well, actually. Right. Yeah. (laughs) You know, it's okay to solicit help of something that they're really good at or something that they own that you don't to borrow Mm -hmm. or whatever. So the other time it's actually a good idea to solicit help is during the actual gathering if you have anybody that's shy or does isn't going to know anybody else mm-hmm. at the gathering or just kind of has some social anxiety, give them a job. That's so good. And they will have a little bit more bridge to interacting with people. Yes. Either show them, you know, where the water pitcher can be filled up or where the napkins are or extra this or extra that, you know, give them something to do. And then they can be busy. Yeah, that's very good. So. And then sometimes there's just somebody who's got to be doing something. Yeah. There's just those type people that's where true. they like. And you're like, I brought you here I to hang out. I can count on them yes. to make sure that that's this true. is done well. Yes. You know, and I know this is a stereotypical comment, but a lot of times men like to be in charge of parking and <laughs> the <true>. orderly <laughs> thing of cars. And so that's an issue in my driveway. And so sometimes I'll have a guy mm-hmm. that I, I'm kind of like, hey, will you make sure that people pull up far enough? and Don't block in this way. Yeah. Or, yeah. That kind of thing. And they most of the time people yeah. don't mind doing that's that kind of thing. Yeah, so. that's really smart. And you brought me to a thought that I had um, – in my mind for later, but I'm going to say it now. Another backtracking kind of thing you can do to really help with planning is thinking through someone's arrival to your home. Yes, this is so good. Because when you think through, okay, what's the season? What's the weather? Yeah. Okay, all these people are going to be coming at a similar time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do they have coats on? Right. Yeah. Is it raining and yes. we're going to have a bunch of wet umbrellas? Yes. Like just thinking through, okay, where do I want them to put the wet umbrella? Clear Is it going to be on the, the porch? Yes. Is it going to be that I have a plastic container that they stick it in yeah. or whatever? Yeah. That's true. You might need to make a bring a tub up or something, something to think through because a lot of times people don't want to mess up your floor because mm-hmm. it's dripping. But mm-hmm. if you don't know, have a plan. Yeah, they don't either. Right. <laughs> so they, they definitely don't because they might not have ever even been to your house. Yeah. You know, did you just have the carpets cleaned and now we have muddy shoes? Like, are you expecting them to put them? Right. You know, just thinking yeah. through that kind of thing. And I always have to think through parking. Mm -hmm. that's one of the things on my list yeah you know how many cars are we talking how many are riding together well and if that is a place of worry talk to your people in advance make sure they're open to carpooling or they know like if you come early you might get blocked in or whatever right yeah that's good so just think through all that kind of stuff of like or you know what's going to be in their hands or on their backs or yeah (laughs) whatever that's good um yeah, let's talk beverages a little bit because this, yeah. this is this is critical because even if you're not serving a lot of food, you're definitely having be- beverages. Whether that's just some sweet tea and lemonade, or you've got a whole bar you're setting up, whatever. Yeah. So this a- is stuff you can do beforehand. Yes, and I um, have mentioned on this podcast before, but I think it's great to have stations around because I don't have one of these grand huge open homes where everybody can be in one place at one time right like 50 in the kitchen that just amazes me I can't even fathom that. if there's five in the kitchen yeah we're wiggling a yeah. little so I like to have the beverages in a different mm-hmm. area that's what I do sometimes I'll have snacks yes in a different area too yes so this gets people moving around too. If you've yes. got a larger gathering and you're wanting people to mingle, then this actually helps people chat or it does be shoulder to shoulder with somebody. Yeah. So ice matters, especially here in the United States. We are in ice the South, people. especially. I know, too. <laughs> I know. But I mean, if you go to other countries, they really don't yeah. use ice like we do. They don't. Europe, it's kind of Asia. funny. So one of the things that. I've struggled with before is I don't have a large ice bucket like the true with the scoop that's pretty I have a now I have a small one 
But sometimes if you've got a, like a large gathering, especially if you're going to be outdoors, you need something bigger. And a lot of times a cooler can totally serve this yeah. purpose. You can throw your drinks in a cooler, throw the ice on top. Boom, you're done. Or just have your ice in the cooler. Yes, exactly. With the scoop. Uh, but if you're if you need a bigger sort of ice bowl and you don't have one, you can use a colander. I've seen people do that before, and then just oh. have a bowl underneath it to catch anything melting, okay. whether this be indoor or outdoor. A lot of times, if you're doing mocktails or alcoholic drinks, now the thing is to have a cool ice mold for your uh, drinks. Yeah, that's true, and now, with herbals with in herbals it, herbals and cranberries <laughs> and all the beautiful lavender. Things. But I only have two of those ice molds. Cube tray. So like I've yeah. got two ready, right? So what do you do after that? Well, you have to prep. And the way that you prep and not have them stick together in the freezer is you put them in a brown bag, a brown paper bag. And they don't. What? That's what I'm, that's what I'm hearing. Really? Yeah. So you can get a brown paper bag and put your molds or your oversized cubes in the brown paper bag, and then you're ready. And they don't melt into each other if they're kept frozen. Like Store if it's... in the freezer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, that makes that's cool. So that's very helpful. That's super cool. You can... Um, I have a couple of those clear um, containers. The huge that have drink dispensers. The, yes. Yes. Now, there's a good side and a, down, and a downside to that. They're kind of hard to clean. Yeah. Like, yeah. If they're sticky or yes. anything like that, I mean, yes. you, you can get down in there, but I'm just yeah. saying it's not super Your whole easy. Arms in there, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I do love because they're clear that you can put fruit in it or yes. like just make it look really pretty. Yeah. And it's pretty easy to, you know, mark like, hey, this is sweet tea, unsweet tea, right. or this is, you know, cranberry you know, whatever, yes. hoo-ha drink, yes. and this yeah. is lemon, hoo-ha drink, <laughs> I don't know. These are the hoo-ha <laughs> drinks. <laughs> okay, I know I'm going to probably make some wine drinkers cringe, but I do think just to save time and allow more openness for your guests to have a glass of wine is to get the twist off versus the corks oh. on wine bottles. I, for some reason, if you go up to some self-serve bottles of wine, you're very reluctant to be the one to get the corkscrew out, cork, you know, maybe you don't even know how. A lot of people don't even know how to use that host corkscrew. Like, they're all different. Some yeah. of them are really expensive. And you, there's just all these barriers, right? That would all go to the wayside if it was just a screw off. So I know I personally enjoy wine that's corked better than a screw off. It does. The taste changes, I think. But again, we're thinking about the guest and if you're wanting to serve your guest or just make sure you've got a red and a white already uncorked. That's not going to. That's right. There's not, That's not going to sustain through the night. unless Depending you're, on your numbers. Yes. Like if you've just got a small number and that's yeah. going to serve yeah. well, just yeah. have it ready yeah. to go. Yeah. If you, I know for me, I don't drink a lot of white. So yeah. if it's open, now I'm making a yeah. yummy chicken wine sauce <laughs> in wine sauce later. <laughs> and that's all good true. too. You know, it's all good. That is so true. Well, it is nice to have. Like, I, I haven't ever gotten to hire a bartender. I think that would be so fun for so a party. Fun. But having it already batched is a great option. If yeah. you're doing some kind of complicated drink, already having it mixed. Or there are some great mixers out there now. Yes. And we have found a really good one. So we got the chance to talk to Josh Ellis of Withco. And they are cocktail mixers that are based right here in Nashville, Tennessee. We got to talk to him about how the company came to be, some of the flavors that they like or that they have in their roster. They sent us some samples. So we're oh my speaking golly. from experience. These are I'm in love. Good. <laughs> and they do not have to always be mixed with alcohol. That's they right. They can be mocktails. They can sustain with some seltzer water or however you like to mix your non-alcoholics they are good so, so good to those of you that just are like you can see the 
lime green margarita mix in your head when that's I'm talking so nasty. about this. I am, that's not what we're talking it about. It is so different. So um, we actually got to chat with him. So let's just kind of give a little, some excerpt from our conversation with Josh Ellis, the co-founder of Withco. For really from the very beginning, that was the thing that Bradley and I both shared was this spirit of hosting and whether it was at home or behind the bar or restaurant, the idea is for your guests to feel comfortable and feel inclusive. And so for us, it started with, hey, hosting and having cocktails at home is a pain. There's nothing really on the market we would drink. Uh, so really, Withco stands for with company. So from the very beginning, it was all about, let's create a product that makes hosting and gathering with good company a lot easier. Uh, and so for me, that played out as my wife and I always having people over. So friends over, family over, we were the ones that would always raise our hand and say, we'll host Christmas or, you know, we'll host Thanksgiving because we get so much life and energy out of having people in our home. But the pain point was like food, relatively easy drinks, not so much. Here's beer, wine, and bring your own liquor and whatever you want. And so really for us, it was like, man, what if we had a tool that you know, could actually make that process easier. So yeah, for us, hosp just the hospitability was all about, you know, family and friends in yeah. the living room. We've talked a lot on this show before about the beauty of just having a batched cocktail already ready. It can be something that you can make as part of the theme of your gathering. Um, you can just take it with right. you. So if you're doing something like tailgating, um, or, you know, you're going to be doing sure. something outside of the home. It's better than just trying to bring all the concoction ingredients. So tell me sort yeah. of what was the Genesis um, drink that you started with? Like, what were you like, if I could master, I don't know, is it the old fashioned or which one, what kind of drink was your starting place? When I met Bradley, he was already a bartender, mixologist. Uh, scientist, if you will, around flavor profiles. Like this was his whole world was operating and building, you know, his cocktails for the restaurants he was managing at that time. And when I met him, I actually asked him to come bartend a birthday party of mine that we were having in the backyard. And I thought this was so cool to have a bartender there shaking up drinks. Like, you know, back in 2016, 2017, I was like, that's just going to be a great experience. Well, he wasn't actually able to make it. So what he decided to do is he goes, hey, I can't be there. But you know what? Just let me put something together and I want to make your birthday special. And again, I had met this guy wow. one time. So there really wasn't a long history of friendship. It just was an invitation for him to come and do what I know he loves, his gift and his trade and also just his passion. And so what he ended up doing is taking recipes that he had made for the bar, put them in a mason jar and drop them off at my house. <laughs> and those recipes, like one was bouquet, which is lavender, fresh lemon, dried rose petal and rosebuds. Old fashioned uh, was just a traditional drink he, he made, but again, the Madagascar vanilla bean and the cinnamon and our, his approach to it wasn't like any old fashioned on the market. And it, you know, kind of became actually our flagship number one product uh, is the old fashioned. And then the third one that night was a ginger based lime cocktail, which now is called Ginger Mule. It's part of our uh, portfolio of drinks. And those were the three. And that night turned into a, there was no alcohol, I'll have you know, because he just brought the batches. So that night we're all in the backyard. It was like a party trick. We're all in the backyard pouring, reading these little cards that he wrote. And we're like, okay, got, the, got, my, got my liquor. And then I pour this dirt. And we're all like, these are the best drinks I've had in someone's backyard. Like, where are these from? And I was like, this amazing bartender, like craftsman at, yeah. at, in his core, like the detention of detail. And I was like, yeah, this guy named Bradley. And that night, you know, the wheels started spinning in my mind and then Bradley and I put our heads together and it was like, man, what if we take these from the bar to the bottle and help people host all around the world with a product like this that you created for your own bar? And it was this perfect marriage of what he does behind the bar with the pain point I had of hosting 
and us kind of putting our two yin and yang worlds together and being like, wow, when I host, I have no idea what I'm doing with drinks. When Bradley was hosting, he was going back and forth to the kitchen all night, making people's cocktails right. from scratch. So we both had this shared like joy of hosting, but completely different pain points. And I go, how many other people out there are just like us? And when they go to their grocery store, similar to what you just said, they're buying five mm -hmm. ingredients. Then they're coming home, trying to put them all together. Then they have to try to get the taste and profile right. And then they have all these extra ingredients. We're like, you know what? The, the Pinterest batching days, <laughs> yeah. not that they're gone, but there is a better yeah. way. And so to answer your question, those were the three, the old fashioned, the bouquet, and then the, the ginger mule uh, were the three from that night. And those are the three flagship products before we uh, rolled out additional ones. Awesome. So yeah, you can find Withco at Sprouts and directly off their website. And we'll put a link to all of that so that you guys can find them. But they are really so good. Tasty. Depending on how much you entertain their website, I think they do free shipping if you spend 69 So okay. if you were to do a lot of entertaining and you just bought several. Yeah. But... What did these run? 20? They were 20 and the serving size was one and a half ounces of the mixer to one and a half ounces of your alcohol base. And that's yeah. it. I mean, you're now not... if you're doing a mocktail, I would do three ounces of mm -hmm. mixer with just a little topping of, you know, some kind of seltzer water yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so good. It would last you a while. I don't remember what the, the ounces were. They have two sizes. They on called their bottles. it 10 servings. Okay. So that would be the half, one and a half ounce. Okay. So if you were doing a three ounce, that's five yeah. servings yeah. instead. Yeah. But I don't think that's bad for how good they are. I don't either. Especially if you, you know, are buying fruit and squeezing things yourself and herbals and yeah. you're going to hit 20 bucks before you know Quickly. it. Quickly. And your time and your time your and time that's what is we're trying to help too. and yes. i love that with co is more time with company with company because that's what it's, it's all beautiful. about beautiful well a few other things i'll say and i don't know if these are on amazon where we could yeah hook them in the show notes okay but i do love to keep a few things on hand not only to make entertaining easier when you have a group coming but if somebody pops in okay what you got or what you got in the freezer just i just kidding. well i love um the simple things that you can just pull out and put in a little candy dish um hubs peanuts yes and they have different flavors they're so, so good. good um mama geraldine's cheese straws, cheese straws. Heck so yes. wonderful yes you can make cheese straws but are you going to have them made if somebody pops in or are you going to add that to your to-do list right you okay. can that's great but that's something that i do find easy to just buy that's good i like that so and those are great to have out again in a different location so if somebody gets there and they're hungry and y'all you're not planning on eating for another hour right they're, they're not miserable and yes stirring around <laughs> lifting up your <laughs> pot to see how it's doing that's so funny okay you can make somebody feel really special these days with music there's so much technology oh my goodness that you can really make somebody feel special so i would just say i mean something really basic and easy to do is if you've got a guest of honor and you know an artist that they like just put that oh, as the pandora fun. list right like if you know you know this person's a country fan pick a country artist and then you're it, then it looks like you curated a playlist right. right well and there's so much you can do with music now even like the kind of odd things like i had a couple girls come over for robert burns day okay. which is he's a scottish poet okay and it's kind of a thing they do in Scotland. Oh, fun. You, so anyway, I had bagpipe music playing when they arrived, and they just got the biggest kick out of that it. That is so cute. And so thoughtful. it was thoughtful. just off yes. of the, yes. you know, playlist from Pandora. That's so fun. That's so fun. Well, a couple other things. I have just notes all over the place. Don't try a new recipe for the first time. Do not. Amen. When you're entertaining, yes. that's an added stress you don't need. And you can try it a week before, and if you like it, 
yeah. do it, but don't make it be the first time. And don't be afraid to have your thing that you always have. Like, you don't have to always be, like, changing it up. Yeah, like, and sometimes people actually like that. Yeah, about, they're like, like, you don't oh. have your pimento cheese. What happened? <laughs> I thought I was expecting that. You know, like, it's okay. Like, have your things. Yeah. I think it's actually endearing. It is. Yeah. Uh, kids are sometimes a factor in these p- gatherings. They actually, are. They're I actually had that on my list, too. So if you're wanting to make this an accessible gathering for the whole family to come, or at least mom to come with the kids, and we're talking like littles that need to, somebody to keep an eye on them, hire a babysitter. Oh, brilliant. Yes. I mean, two hours is not going to cost you too much. If it's a big group, hire two babysitters. Yeah. If it's somebody in the group has a young adult or a teen in their family, talk to them about, you know, bringing yeah. so-and-so. It this will... is another thing that makes outdoors easier, uh, too. <sighs> Does so it true. not? Like, so just true. let them go run. But, yeah, and then <laughs> communicate that with your guests, right? So that makes me, as the mom coming to the gathering, I have a totally different take of how this night's going to go. If I've already been told by the host that so and so is going to watch the kids in the bonus room, you're like, we're going to have adult conversations. Oh, this is going to be really fun. fun. I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. So then you know, talk to the babysitter obviously about like what's the game plan? Where are the kids allowed to go? And you know, are they going to yeah. be playing outside or are they staying inside? All that. But yeah, get a sitter. That's and a brilliant. Make it easy so that every parent isn't so concerned about you know what their kids getting into so well I would say also it's a great thing to have a bin of toys like I don't have kids but I do have a bin of toys so good so that when there are a few that come over I'm not just like you know yeah here you want to play tic-tac-toe right (laughs) (laughs) like I got a notepad yeah and then I've seen you do this before but having to craft for the kids to do kids oh, love a craft love it yeah so having all the stuff all ready to go mm-hmm. for them will keep mm-hmm. them busy and mm-hmm. interacting and they're yeah. where you want them to be in that particular area or whatever yeah and, well, and in that regard I've actually enlisted my son to help like he's just now six but like he kind of owns like, some hey, things. let me. Here's how we do the craft, mm-hmm. and here's yeah. where the stuff is. That's hey, so cute. That's raising up a host right there. Like <laughs> that's some kids would enjoy that. Not all, but some kids would. Um, another thing I would say is just think through the things like, especially bef- right before your guests come, is the bathroom well stocked with toilet paper? Good call. And, yes. N- you know, towels, all of that. Yes. Has the trash been taken out? Yes. You don't want oh, people to happens. get there and yes. you've been cooking and the trash is completely full yeah. now. Yeah. All the chopped things. Or sm- at the top. Yes. Yeah. So just make sure that's been taken <laughs> out. And then I like to think of the thermostat too. Like, yeah. you know, if there's going to be 20 people coming in, you may want the thermostat down a little because yeah. body heat's going to bring it yes. back up yes. or whatever. Like yeah. just thinking through all of that. I like that. Outdoor entertaining in general, although I think it's easier, it is its own animal. Yeah. And we did an episode on outdoor entertaining. So I'll link to that also in the show notes because spring and summer are coming soon and people might be even thinking about like an Easter brunch outside or something. Yes. Easter's one of those times it's like, oh, will we get to be outside or not? Because it's still on the fence and it's early this year. So yeah. I have one more to mention. Okay. Clean up. Have your dish. Have your dishwasher already empty. Oh yeah, if if that's possible, like if or yeah. use disposables or both. So hopefully something recyclable. That's nice. You know, yeah. If you've got solo cups, you're using those are recyclable, but or paper plates, but or do a combo. Do paper plates and real glasses or whatever. Yeah, sometimes it's good to even do both. Even right, a if little, you wanted a real dinner plate, but. Dessert can be on a little yeah. clear throwaway, exactly. cute plasticky plate. That works that too. That all helps. Yes. Also, I did not mention this, but when you're thinking through your menu and your what you're going to cook, there are some things that are good store-bought. Yes. Don't be a- afraid to intertwine that with yeah. what you make. Yeah. Like yeah. local bakeries or gourmet-to-go shops have some great options where if you only want to make, you know, Make homemade one or two things right. and then buy yeah. 
somebody made it. Exactly. <laughs> it just wasn't you. And then just put it on something cute. Yeah. And, and that looks great. Yeah. And then I've already alluded to this, but just make sure that that last, I like to even say like the last 45 minutes or an hour is just for me getting ready. Oh, this is preaching. Yes. And doing the fluffy stuff. Like I call the fluffy stuff, lighting the candles, Mm -hmm. kind of making sure, you know, the flowers you put in the vase are straight and the way you want them. Light in the fireplace, play and yeah. hit and play on the playlist. Yeah. That kind of thing. Like the last 45 minutes or an hour needs That's to good. just be the fluffy stuff. Yeah. And just you, lipstick you and candles. Ready and, yeah. Or not, not getting in the shower. Like no, no. Starting. I didn't mean that getting ready. Yeah. But yeah, like fluffing your hair and some lipstick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> maybe that last change of clothes. Because if I was cooking, I'm not yeah. going to be in what I'm wearing probably. I have had so many times where the... Here everybody comes. I'm like, this is not what I was planning on wearing, but this is what I'm I wearing. Guess this is what I'm wearing. Yeah. Well, I'll, so many people mention how much they love my fried chicken, but that is such a thing that has to be, you know, labor intensive. It's labor intensive. It's got to be In fried, real time. <laughs> like not two hours ago. Yes. And the whole house smells like fried chicken because mm-hmm. I don't have a big house and it's not well ventilated. And so, um, that's a hard one to pull off. Yeah. And make look easy. Like, right. I look like I've been <laughs> <laughs> in the kitchen. I look greasy <laughs> when they get here. Well, I, I know we helped somebody out there. Somebody just went, oh my goodness, I've never thought about that. And I can do this. And That's what I want you to be saying. I can do this. You can do this. Yes. So whatever size scale your gathering is, I know we helped you with some element of it. Confident of it. And most importantly, just look your guests in the eye and be there for them. Be present. That's the purpose is to be together. That's so right. Maybe you're celebrating something or maybe you're just gathering for the sake of gathering, but being be present. present. All right. That should do it for now. We've got a lot of episodes we referenced. So check the show notes for all those details and have a great week. Peace be with y'all. You've just listened to an episode of the Steel Magnolias podcast, an independent show funded solely on support from listeners like you and a few advertisers from time to time. For reminders of what we just said and links to what we just mentioned, take a look at the description of this episode. They are right there. Are you enjoying the show? We hope you'll text a friend or a loved one to tell them about the podcast. Make sure they know how to get to a podcast first. And we invite you to join our mailing list to be the first to know about episodes, giveaways, events, and even those gatherings. Sign up at steelmagnoliaspodcast.com.